Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, yeah, just to, just to start the show, and I get sounds coming in. Uh, anyway, good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is Rick Utsu here with Ergun Webb, and we are going to hopefully have a, a good show tonight. This is Let's Talk Ergun. It has been a while since I've been up here, and hopefully you guys will enjoy the show. Um, today, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to say hi to Angie. Hopefully, she can catch the show tonight. She is out traveling, so she won't be with us this show, but hopefully, we'll have her back soon. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. First thing I want to talk about is just uh, want to say a big thank you to our sponsors, uh, and I'm talking about sponsors in general. We're still looking for sponsors here uh, for, our, uh, for th this particular show, so hopefully, that works out. Um, am I not getting data? Let's see. It seems to be okay. There we go. Um, we're having some internet issues, so if things completely uh, dump out, I'm going to probably just switch connections. Let me just go ahead and do that now since we are just getting started. Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, everybody. I think we are back now. Uh, some internet issues were giving me a problem, but we are back. We're good to go. And let me just go ahead and start over so that when my sister goes to edit this and put it up on the podcast, it all makes sense. Good evening, everybody. This is Rick here with Airgun Web, and we are have our show here. Let's talk air guns. It's been a few weeks. We've had a bunch of stuff going on, and we are just very happy to be back in the mix of it get my internet monitoring over here we've had all kinds of fun stuff going on here guys we've had uh internet issues where we just can't keep things up and going i think we have that at least some workarounds in place that will help us not have those problems anymore that would be wonderful um today we've got kind of i hope a fun show for you guys something you guys are going to be interested in, in talking about and i'll be trying to keep an eye on the uh on the chat here uh so that we can um yeah we can talk about it uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to our sponsors. So, you know, as I've mentioned many times, uh, we make zero, well, not nothing, but might as well be nothing uh, on YouTube revenue. I think I got my uh, YouTube check today for a whopping $153. And so, as you can imagine, if we had any other type of channel tech or anything else, we'd actually be doing pretty well. Uh, but because we're a gun channel, it's very, very difficult to earn any revenue. So if it wasn't for our sponsors, there'd be no chance that we'd be able to do what we're doing. So I want to say a huge thank you to those guys. If you guys ever want to see who they are, there's a couple ways you can do it. First of all, if you go to arrogantweb.com, right at the bottom of the homepage, you can see the, the key sponsors here that help support what Aragon Web's doing. We have the same thing. We have a sponsors page on the GTA. We actually have some new sponsors which we need to add. That's my doctor's office telling me. I have an appointment Friday, uh, as they normally call me on a Tuesday. So you guys can go check them out. You can also click on their links. Let's hope it works. And it should pull up all the content we've done for them. When you go to their channel, you can actually see the content we've done for these sponsors. So it's kind of a cool way for you guys to go check out who helps, helps, helps us do what we do. Uh, yeah, and also... Gateway to Airguns, if you're not a member of the GTA, please consider signing up and joining in the discussion. We have 2.4 million posts on the site, so a lot. Uh, and there's, as Angie says, there's something for every air gunner alive uh, on the website. And yeah, we have some great folks there that just want to help other folks, you know, enjoy the sport of air gunning. So the GTA is great there. And as you can see, we have folks, if you click these banners, you go right to uh, our sponsors and yeah, you can check out what they have going on. So uh, yeah, that's, if you guys want to know who helps us do what we do, uh, we certainly don't try and hide it. We try and let everybody know because if it wasn't for those guys, we couldn't do what we're doing. All right, with that sort of out of the way, let's talk a little bit about well, we just talked about the GTA a little bit. I want to talk about Aragon Army because this is kind of our next big push that we're trying to create something that's a little bit uh, different than I don't want to re reinvent the wheel, right? So that uh, there's no point in that. There's other forums. I don't want to just create another forum. I want to create more of a social media type environment 
where we can share information, talk about things, manufacturers have a freedom to share their stuff, vendors have a freedom to share their stuff, and regular air gunners can share their stuff. And Air Gun Armory is just a great way to do it. It's free. You can join it if you're a content creator and you want to have your own space under the Creator's Corner. Reach out to me personally and we can. I'll send you the information I need so that I can get you onboarded. We have a Vendor's Corner. We have a Manufacturer's Corner. We're going to be adding... Other collections like for Airgun mods and just all manner of things like Airgun events. I think Airgun events would be great, whether it's shooting competitions or just regional events or maybe Airgun clubs. These are, th these are things that we want to help. Uh, we want to help facilitate communication amongst all the parties. So there's like uh, there's some, you know, limitations that places have. And, I you know, that's fine. I want this to be like super open. Obviously, we need to, you know, watch the subject matter and that kind of fun stuff. But ideally, what we're looking to do is just make it so that everybody can communicate easily and effectively and not have that, you know, fear of, oh, no, Facebook is going to take my picture of my pellet pen down or whatever the heck it is. Uh, really quickly, I forgot to check. I want to make sure I'm using the right microphone. And I am. Yay. Okay. Uh, we are having to run air conditioning. I guess it's that time of year in Texas. We have to maybe kick on the heater to take the chill out in the morning, and then we have to run the AC in the afternoon. So anyway, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, what's the true uh, – John is asking, what's true FPS on HW90 with a six-grain pellet? I don't know that off the top of my head. That's been too long. Uh, Andy said, it's, all right, Andy, that's awesome. Uh, let's see. Black Rose, I just bought an FX. Um, I, oh, I can't. Uh, DR5 from you. Okay. Excellent. I think Angie's got some content coming out on that rifle if it hasn't already posted. So that's very, very cool. That's awesome. Anyway, back to Aragon Army. Uh, you guys, it's, I know it's another thing to sign up for, but, um, yeah, check it out, and please let me know if there's information you think would be fun and interesting to put here. Then, uh, yeah, we want to make it as inclusive and, and involving, and we just want to have a nice place for people to come and hang out. So it's a little different than, like, GTA because that's very much focused not about sales and promotion of that stuff. Um, this is kind of wide open, so you guys, please check it out. Let me know what you think. Um that's excellent, Andy. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Let's get into some of this stuff here, guys. So upcoming videos. Tomorrow we have um, we have the uh, the Gauntlet. Uh, I'll get the name right here. The SL, SL30, excuse me. Uh, I did some range time testing at 50 yards with different ammo and got some really good results. That gun is so stinking impressive. If you guys haven't seen my footage on that already, you really need to go back and take a look at it. Uh, the 30 cal shooting steel out to 100 yards was awesome. It's so unbelievably consistent. I'm getting 19 shots. You should get up to 24. I don't. I mean, I'm just shooting mine out of the box, and it's. I'm getting 19 on the rig, and it's very predictable, very accurate. I love that gun. It's pushing well over 100 foot-pounds and 30 cal. It loves the Hades. So as far as a hunting round, that's awesome. I'm looking to do some more work with that. Gonna, I've got a new optic I want to put on it, and I want to drive some slugs with it and see what 30 cal slug is going to do the trick in that gun. So I'm excited about doing some more work with it. Just a super, super nice air gun. So definitely, you know, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so you can check that out. But that should be coming out tomorrow. Um, this Saturday, we're actually – Changing our, our release dates, um, we have gotten really behind. Uh, I've been maintaining what I have to do uh, for sponsors. But, man, I have so much content that is sitting, like, in the fixing to get ready pile and actually stuff I filmed that we haven't edited and yet released. We're going to have to we're gonna have to be doing more, more premiere releases. So we've been doing a lot of shorts, been trying to do shorts, and... Uh, behind the scenes stuff. So if you guys are part of the Patreon page or the Officers Club at Aragon Army, you can get access to those exclusive behind the scenes. I'll be shooting some more of those tomorrow. But we're going to change our release schedule. So right now we've been trying to do one premiere a week, like a focus premiere for a sponsor. We're going to be going to two and we may need to go to three just so that we can try and keep up with the backlog of products I have uh, down at the range. And weather is getting better, so I'm looking to spend 
probably better part than half of my week down there either working with air guns or filming. So I ex I expect we're going to be kicking things in high gear, and we're going to have a lot of cool stuff. I know I need to get back to the Cometa. We've got the Gambo CFX. I believe G-Man saying, where is the CFX footage, Rick? Why haven't you done it? Well, I just haven't gotten to it yet. So I know the gun shoots great because I used it in Florida to kill iguanas, and it was way, way fun. So I've got – I just did an unboxing of the Gambo Shadow Elite 22, which actually is black and yellow. It looks really cool. I might have pictures of that gun. I don't know if I'll share that tonight. But I've, I've, that is a – I think it's going to be a really nice gun. In fact, if I go back into the archives of Rickland, back when I was living in South Carolina shooting in my backyard and flip-flops in the grass uh, with the – plastic toys in the back for my daughter at the time yeah back in the day um i had a gamo csi it was a camo version and it was when they first came out with the whisper so i had the big can whisper at the front skinny little barrel super light brake barrel i think that one was just a regular stock it didn't have the thumb hole well they came out with like what do they have now they have the fusion which has the thumb hole stock they had an adjustable cheek piece but it's got the same sort of Whisper can, thin barrel, fluted barrel, uh, really lightweight, easy to cock, really nice 22 cal gun, and they had it on a screaming sale. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I don't know if it's still on sale or not. This show doesn't get any any YouTube YouTube love, so I might as well give you links, right? Um, let's see exclusives. Is it down here? Shadow Elite, where is it? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it on page one and I missed it? Let's see here. There it is, right there. Uh, yeah, it's still on a crazy sale. So 160 bucks. Um, this is a really nice gun. Uh, I've already done some, sh and and here's the cool thing, right? For you guys who love open sights, there's actually some comments we'll get to talk about open sights. This has the really nice gamma open sights, and it has the adjustable cheek piece. So drop it down, lock it down, shoot open sights, raise it up, lock it down, shoot with your scope. So best of both worlds. Uh, I, I'm going to say they made this for me because it's got yellow accents. So this is really the Airgun Web Shadow Elite 22. I, they didn't do that, but I'm going to claim it anyway. And this is a just a really nice, basic, straight-up brake barrel. And the price right now is really, really good. So I'm excited to get this out. It's got the gas ram, if you guys like that. I kind of like a spring, but that's okay. This is I'm, – I'm, it's sitting right over there, and I did the unboxing. It's going to, that's going to come out. I'm going to take this down the range in the next couple of days, and I'm going to be shooting it. I cannot wait. It looks – it feels so nice, so lightweight, so easy to cock. It's an all-day, take it out the woods, shoot it. If you had a pellet pen, you know, that's not as good as the auto loader. I get it, but the pellet pen is awesome. If you don't know what that is, look it up, pellet pen. And it's like a little – it's a pellet pen. It holds pellets. It makes it really easy. Anyway, super excited about that gun, obviously. You guys can tell. Let's see what I got here uh, for comments. Andy's asking, the Beeman Commander any good? It's actually quite good. Uh, that's a really nice gun, Andy. Um, email me. And I have actually one of the things I've got to be doing here shortly is I'm going to be putting up a website with all of my overstock stuff left over from Airgun Pro Shop and a bunch of review product that I no longer need. So I will be releasing that website shortly. And if you guys are looking for some cool stuff, you can go to that website and I'll have that. Uh, we'll be able to share that with you here shortly. So that's going to be pretty cool. And if you like tech stuff like computer stuff i'm going to be getting rid of a lot of my computer stuff there too because i have way too much i can only use so many computers at one time uh, and i have more so those got to go too anyway let's see what we got here um uh needs upgrade to match be yes uh interesting you mentioned the 3622 black roads i actually have one here from Ergon depot that i got to write an article on so that's going to be interesting. Now, I write the definitive guides, which are not reviews. They're just guides. So they're not opinion-based. They're not like buy it, don't buy it. They're just, this is the gun. This is what it is. This is what works. This is how you make it work, etc. So 
I don't have an opinion in that article. I won't have an opinion of the gun because it's just my job to write about it, not review it per se. Um, yeah, we'll see. The other gun I got, I wish I could show it to you. Um, maybe I could pull it up. Uh, I got this in, um, and somebody's chiming. That was an Ergon Army chime. Um, let me go over to Ergon Depot. I'll show you the other gun I got in, and I actually reached out to Norinka. And if all goes well, this is something that I'm going to be able to hold on to and do some work with. So I have the Variatus, Variatus, I'm guessing, um, the Norica, excuse me, the Norica. This is a very cool air gun. It's, I mean, it looks like a lot of others like that. Kind of looks like a Wildcat, kind of looks like an Evan X, kind of looks like a bunch of different things. Um, but I got this in and I'm excited to get this down the range. That's, I've actually got to write an article again for Air Gun Depot on this gun, again, a guide, but if things go well and Norca is able to work things out, as I expect they should be able to, this is something we're gonna be able to hang hang on to and do some work with, so I'm super excited about that. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we got on here. Um, hey, Mike. Mike says, hi, Air Gunners. Hi, Mike. Um, okay. All right, you guys chat amongst yourselves. Let's get back to some cool stuff. Anyway, so those are some of the things we have coming up. Um, the other thing that we'll, we'll jump into quickly, because I just finalized, like I have a minimum base to, to like move forward. We, we met that goal, and so we're going to keep trying to sign uh, participants over the next few days, you know, as quickly as possible, because i got to make all the marketing materials. But Airgun Expo 2024 is going to be happening. So, first of all, if you guys want to come out, um, we have some RV parking. If you want to come out and stay, uh, there's like seven slots. So it's first come, first serve. We have um, we have coyote camping. You can do that all you want. But we also, I mean, there's a hotel about 45 minutes away. If you guys want to stay there, you can come out. So the event's open to the public. We are way out in the boonies, so way, 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 way out. So you have to really want to get here. But it's it's open if you want to come. We're going to be um, running from the 27th to the 31st. And we've got, let's see, signed up. We've got McCavity, which is awesome. So we have the MA2s here. Uh, we'll have the 22, 25, and 30. should be getting the 30 cal soon. We might have the production guns in time. But if not, we've got the pre-production guns, which are pretty stinking nice. So we got that. We've got JSB, of course, our Predator. We've got um, Gamos uh, signed up. We've got JTS. We've got um, Airgun Capital. Let's see. Who else do we have? Oh, gosh. One, Gamo, JTS, Airgun Capital. I just had them. Dadgummit, that is like really frustrating because I'm just signing them up today. I haven't written them down. I haven't written down them. I can like look them up like like right here somewhere. Um, here it is. Here it is. I got it right here. So McCavity, Ergon Capital, J Gamo, um, JTS, J JSB right now so far. And we've got more that I'm just waiting to hear from. So We've got already a good selection. We are going to have some really cool guns. I want to reach out to New England Air Gun because I think John's going to want to do something. I've reached out to Utah, reached out to Air Guns of Arizona. We'll see how all those guys come back. Hopefully, we will be able to round out things. I have a fixed number of slots, so it's not like we can have 100. That would be great. We need more time and more space and more people. But we have a fixed number of live slots, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun that week trying to work things out so Angie can come out as well. Um, Travis theoretically from JTS is going to be here. We'll see if that works out. That'll be really cool. I don't know if Joe's going to be able to make it or not, but we're going to have a, we're going to have a fun time the week of May 27th and be Monday through Friday. We're going to have, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, I also have some cool product from Tuxing. They sent me their gas compressor, which I'm super excited about because I'm taking out some of the big compressor stuff that requires 220 down at the range because I don't want to have to keep running a generator every time. I need to run something. So I'm going to actually have a gas scuba compressor down there that I'm going to be using as my main fill system. So we've got a bunch of cool stuff to share with you guys, and we'll be creating content that's going to be their canned, pre, you know, canned stuff that will go in between the lives. We'll have a bunch of that stuff we'll be doing. So I'm excited. 
Yeah, well, it was touch and go whether or not we we're going to do it because the air gun market right now is very soft. As you guys know, the economy, uh, does the disposable income, got tough to come by right at the moment. So air gun market is suffering a little bit. But we've got some great companies that have stepped up to help us get this done. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot more by the time it's like it's dead, dead deadline. I think we're going to have a lot more people signed up. So I'm excited. So definitely stay tuned for that. We'll have live shows. We're probably going to have to do those on Vimeo. I'm going to be doing starting some testing. Um, don't want to do them on Facebook because I don't want to get kicked off. I don't want to do I can't do them on YouTube because we can't touch an air gun or, or a gun and a live. They get all testy. We should be able to do it on Vimeo. Uh, I'd love to do it on the Airgun Army, but I don't think I have enough bandwidth and the hours of lives to do what I want to do. We'll see. But anyway. We're going to be doing it. We're going to have fun doing it. And if you want to come out and join us, come on out. We're going to have we're going to have a good time. Let's see. We got any questions here? Mike's asking me, have I seen something new on the Snow Peak stuff? No, I haven't. Uh, in fact, I had somebody ask me today, what am I most excited about in the air guns right now? And I had to say, I don't know. And I know that's kind of sad, so I apologize for not being more up on things. But oh my gosh, I have been so buried. Uh, in different things that people have asked, how's my health doing? Praise God. That's doing very well. I uh, had a couple things I noticed in my, my sort of last week I had that I'm not coming up tonight, some health stuff. There was a little bit of health stuff. It was manageable and yeah, we're going to get, the, I mean, it's, it's not like at the severity that I've had going on. It was something, but it's, it didn't put me in the hospital. So <laughs> there's some two thumbs up there. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm feeling better, which is awesome. Uh, and I've been able to get some rest, been able to actually start beginning to lay out the kind of work we need to get going so we can get things back up and running at the volume that we need to. So we can get to all the cool stuff that's sitting down at the, at the workshop. So for those that have asked, doing pretty good. Thank you for your prayers. Appreciate it. So we've talked about Air Gun Expo. We've talked about some of the upcoming videos. We said hi to Angie. Hi, Angie. She's not up here, but she, she'll probably watch it later. Um, yeah, let's talk about the next thing. And I want to talk about Airgun Mod. So first of all, um, this is something I've had sitting in my shop for a long time. Okay, so do I have pictures of, yes, the parts? Um, uh, let's see. I don't want to look at that. We'll look at this. There it is. Um, okay, so this is like a whole kit from Buckrail. So here's here's the Buckrail. Let's see if they have the kit here. Where is it? It's the Marauder kit. Uh, let me let me just type in Marauder. It's the Marauder pistol. That's the old one. Old, old, older. Um, let's see. Did I get like a super special kit? Maybe I did. I feel like super special now. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, here it is. I'm not that special. All right, so this is the kit that he sent me. And he sent me everything, like... It was it was extremely awesome. So he sent me the uh, the assembly grip assembly, the trigger, the foregrip, the UTG folding stock adapter, UTG tube, and a uh, a Magpul um, stock. So the full kit uh, is is I think other parts you'll need to see a like the extend. Yeah, okay. So the side folder, this guy here. Um, this is very cool. Let's see. It came with that. The extension tube. Um, the, yeah, the buttstock. So, yeah, it came with all of this stuff. So, first of all, super huge thank you to Terry um, at Buckrail for sending this stuff out. Now let's kind of talk about Aragon mods in general. Um, I know there there are some folks that really like 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 as much as I like taking computers apart, putting them back together, and you know getting like ten extra FPS in a game or something. There are folks that just eat 
breathe modding their air guns. I, that's not me per se. I do really enjoy like this stuff because like all the hard work's been done, right? So I can, you know, I can get just the kit. I have the default product. I can buy either bits or pieces and build it as I go or just buy the whole thing. And it all just kind of fits around or within the existing structure. It's so very cool. I love this kind of stuff. I want to know what you guys think of mods like rebuilds like terry has if we look at his website because i've done a bunch of these builds um the beeman i've did a couple of things i've done the uh, air venturi avenger rebuild i've also done the jts aracuda uh rebuild both of which i think shot better after the conversion um maybe it's just ergonomically i like the way they fit me better i don't know I like the way they shot better. I thought they were more stable. Uh, and I do know that the way Terry has built some of the parts, the way they go together certainly holds the gun together like it ain't going anywhere. So that it gives you really good rigidity. I have this uh, 27 re uh, that Angie was working with. I have one of those um, down at the range that I need to get out and play with. So if you're into mods and I, I'm waiting to see – <laughs> Black Road saying if Buckrail had a thousand dollar club, I'd be a member by now. Yeah. Uh yeah, he's asking, do you remember uh, when Buckrail only had one page of product? <laughs> yeah. Um left-handed air gunner or left-handed trigger finger is asking, how durable is uh probably are the stocks? Um, let's just to make sure we're talking about the same thing. If, are you talking about uh the buckrail stuff? If you're talking about the buckrail stuff, they've been great. Now, I've used his custom printed stuff like I have it on the floor. I'm not going to get up and grab it right now, but my original mod on the Marauder that I did. So the original Marauder conversion was this one. I didn't have the side cocker one, but I had this model. It won't get bigger. Um, but it was had a, a it's kind of a chunkier foregrip, uh, and had a 3D printed um, tube. It worked great. I didn't have any problems with durability or strength, so that was cool. I do like the new one that he's got here is using an, an aluminum a UTG aluminum buffer tube. So it's like it's metal. Uh, the folding, he used to do a plastic folding. I didn't have a problem with that. It worked fine. I'm not like hanging on it and doing pull-ups with it and beating things over the head with it. So it'd probably be just fine. Uh, but I didn't have any issues with durability. And I guarantee you, if under normal use conditions, you had a problem, I'm pretty sure Terry will take care of it. So uh, hopefully that's, uh, that should do it. Um, Mike's asking about the Umrex Zelos. Now, I'm not sure if this is the gun that I know about or not. Let's take a look at it. Let's see. Cool looking. Uh, let's see. I don't know anything about it. Looks very nice. Looks like they're going after... A particular market. <laughs> cool. Is it in stock? That's interesting. I'll have to reach out to Umarex. I have, I have so many so many of their products I need to finish getting through. So I'll get through those, and then we'll see. Right now, the work I'm doing for Umarex is, frankly, kind of unsponsored. Uh, they've uh, I'm I'm covering things because I think they're worth covering, or they they interest me personally, um, and they are a a sponsor on the GTA, but they are not a sponsor right now of Ergon Web. So any work I do from them needs kind of out of my own pocket at the moment. So, uh, but that looks interesting. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I get through the SL30 and I have the hammer I need to shoot again. I haven't shot that yet. And I really want to. So again, we've got some weather clearing. Once I get through those and I get through some other backlog, I can certainly reach out. I'm, I know that um, they, they're pleased to send me product for me to uh, to work with and share with you guys. So I know I can do that. So let's see how that works out. 
Um, like if it's anything like the Notos, it's a winner. I love the Notos. I need to shoot that some more too. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so, Ergen Maz, the other company that we just did some work with, uh, let me go, and they, they've they kind of gone a different direction. I think it's kind of cool because at one point you had kind of button heads a little bit with Ergen Tactical and, um, excuse me, Ergen Capital and Buckrail, but now you have this divergence. So, uh, Ergen Capital is really kind of building adapters and uh, moderators, and I think that's a really kind of good fit. A good niche for them. They've kind of gotten away from a lot of the 3D printed stuff and gone to like just really affordable, just simple adapters that we all need to make stuff work, right? Um, I did a video unboxing and this product is actually going to be going down to Angie. Yeah, this was so much fun building this kit. And actually it's kind of a funny video because I make some mistakes and have to figure things out along the way. But anyway, it's kind of cool. But that is that is a Damn fine looking Marauder pistol. That's not a pistol anymore. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so, all right, so the new Ergon Capital thing I think is really cool because you have uh, an aluminum moderator with baffles right here, uh, and you have the adapter. So, even if you already have the Hot Sun adapter, their adapter is a little nicer. I think I would imagine that the additional threads give you kind of more stability, something more to bite on, make sure things stay truer. I don't know if that's correct or not. I asked them, they said, eh, it's just because it, you may need a spare or maybe you lost yours or whatever. We, we we include it. So, okay, that's cool. So it comes with the adapter and this. This kit is for the hot side jet. And I'll be sending my jet. See, there's the factory adapter. And it's got a, just only a few threads versus the adapter, like this adapter, which has a lot more thread engagement, which I think is probably going to be better. I would imagine it's not going to hurt it. Um, yeah, but we're going to, I'm going to be sending this whole rig down to Angie and she's going to be working with this for the GTA. So I'm excited about that, but I wanted to do the unboxing and the, the, the moderator certainly does take the edge off too. Hold on. Oh, excuse me. All right. So the moderator works. Uh, one of the things I mentioned, I forget which video it was. I don't know if it was the Evanex video or this one. Um, you guys probably won't see me use a DB meter anymore. Uh, and the reason is I can't validate the results. So it makes no sense for me to try and give numbers as like scientific DB numbers when I can't validate that they're accurate. I've got three different DB meters. They all give me three different numbers and they're not like a, like a little bit off. They're like way off. So like they're, I, I just can't trust them. So, and I bought, like affordable ones and I bought expensive ones. And I mean, the last thing to do would maybe be a calibration, get one that I could calibrate with the device that calibrates it and then do testing. But then that would only be valid for my office or my range. It wouldn't apply to your backyard. So it's just I'm not going to do it. I will give you my opinion on something being loud or not uh, and go from there and just try and be somewhat objective in that. I mean, I play guitar for years, rock guitar, and it's turned up to 11. So my hearing is what it is. So I, it may not be, <laughs> it may not be objective for me, I guess. So, but I can tell you that both, uh, and I'll get to the evidence in a minute. I tell you that the, uh, the moderator certainly did take a lot of the edge off of the, off the sound, which was very, very cool. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool product. And I don't think the price is outrageous too. I think, oh, well, let's just see. I think this is the, the Hots on Debt bundle. So yeah, I mean, you're looking at uh, the adapter and doohickey is 115 bucks. I think that's pretty reasonable. So it's certainly on the affordable side when you look at other similarly built products. I think this is pretty cool. Pretty good. All right. Next thing I want to talk about. Let's see what we got here. Back Backroads just saying he was just checking out AG Capital suppressors for his FX DRS. Yeah, um, I have requested uh, basically 20, well, I have a 22 for this, but I won't have it because Angie's getting it. 22, 25, 30, and 35 because um, I want to run the gamut. They do have a 35 now available. It uses a different thread. It's like, let me see here. 
go to products. We can go right to silencers. They should call them moderators. Anyway, uh, it's M M18 threads. So they've got a 35 cal. So I'm very interested to give this a shot and see how it works. Um, yeah. So I've got I got some 35s, either MNX or some, I have an AEA 35, which I haven't shown you guys yet. I haven't worked with it, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm eager to see how this is going to play out because I want to test it. So we should be getting those in. And since they're they're part of the the participants on Airgun, Airgun Expo, we're going to be getting some stuff in, doing some work, and we'll be showing them off live. So that'll be kind of fun. All right. Let's see. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to switch over to this screen for a minute because I meant to move some pictures over, and I didn't. So let's see here. Oh, yes, that's the wrong set. I got in, uh, here they are. I got in the Evanex 30 Cal Viper. Now, I don't know if you guys know about this. I mean, if you don't know about it, you've probably been living on a rock. But let me switch this over to this album. And we'll go back over here. Okay, so those are so pretty. All right, so this is the 30 Cal Viper. Now, this is a... And I want to know what you guys think about this as a product class. And I know Hubin has theirs too. I don't have that product yet. I'm hoping I can get one from New England Airgun at some point. But we're looking at semi-automatic 30 count. Now, I have not tested it for accuracy or shot count or energy yet. So bear with me. I have just done the unboxing and I've you know, pulled the trigger a couple times to see how loud it is like with and without the included moderator the moderator like here does a, it has it makes a difference and this is a true moderator with baffles internals this is so evanex instead of just a hollow cylinder just like an air gap which does work but baffles work better this has got some baffles in it so i'm i'm eager to see how all of this plays out um when we actually get it down the range which should be happening in the next day or two so very very cool uh, very, very cool product. But I'm curious, what do you guys think of something like a 30 cal semi-automatic PCP? Let's say it's doing, I don't know, what kind of energy do you think it needs to make to be something you would want? I'm curious. Because I think it's, well, I have the 22 and I have the 25, and they are damn fun to shoot. They're just really nice guns. So I have... The 25, is it 25 or 22? I have one of them converted into the microcarbine, which is my daughter's favorite gun. Like, she claimed, she shot it and claimed it instantly. In fact, we were shooting that, and uh, with a red dot sight at 50 yards, she was just pegging a steel plate, just leaning up against the, the uh, standing, leaning up against the awning, just tink, tink, tink. She absolutely loves that gun. So, um yeah, I'm thinking that it's it's a super nice platform, but I'm curious, what do you guys think uh, of this? Because again, I have a 22, 25, and now 30, and I'm curious, what's the 30 going to do for shot count, energy, etc.? Uh, it comes with, um, I don't know if it comes with all of these accessories. I know I got them, but I don't know if there's some of them are extra. So it came with two of the single five shot mags plus a double mag came with the, the, the moderator came with a bunch of o-rings came with a fitting i know it probably comes with the o-rings fitting and the tools but i'm not sure what of this extra stuff uh you you might get so anyway so i'm waiting to see if you guys respond to this and i haven't seen anything come through yet so if you guys don't have anything to talk about on this we can move on to like the next thing we can do some viewer q a because i have Several things to talk about on the Q&A. We can come back to this, though, if you guys want to talk about it. But be on the lookout out for this. We'll say thank you to Evanex for sending this out. And I will be uh, – I've got to, I've actually got to do, go down and do some photography for them, for them tomorrow as well as do some video work. Just a really, really pretty – I wish I wish they got this right. right. I know it's not a big deal, right? But you see that? You see how that right there – I really wish they had made that match the profile of, or make this anyway. Been nice if all that kind of matched instead of had that little funny lip to it. Anyway, just me being picky. All right. So let's get to the viewer Q&A stuff. 
Um, first things, I have uh, looks like a lot of the questions and comments were from the Gamo stuff we posted lately. I had, I think, some of the content we've done, specifically like the tutorials or setups, have been really, really useful and helpful. I think my the most profitable video I've ever done, um, and actually generates enough revenue over the course of a period of time to actually have been worth doing, and, and that is. The like the Gamo Swarm Magnum Gen 3i setup where we did the unboxing and set the scope up and you know install the scope and that kind of thing. Uh, super popular, like a ton of views, and just every every week we have a bunch of comments on that. So um, this one was kind of an interesting comment though because I don't think he really, uh, I don't think he thought his comment through. So maybe it's a bit of a hot take. We'll see. So that gun. Uh, doesn't have open sights. The new Gen 3 eyes, they took the open sights off. Not my favorite direction. I like having open sights. Uh, that gun has that really high cheek riser. There's another comment down there we're going to get to that I will talk about because there's actually a solution to that. I'll talk about it then. Um, but it has that che high cheek riser. So the open sights on the regular guns were kind of worthless. They couldn't, I couldn't use them. I couldn't get comfortable using the open sights. So in some regards, why well, have them? And because most brick and mortar stores, and if you guys know how retail works, if you're gamo and you want to get shelf space, then you fill a particular criteria that the store is asking for. In fact, you don't, you really don't have a lot. You, you oftentimes don't even get to tell them, uh, what you're going to sell it to them for. They'll say, I'll pay you this much and you're going to make this much money. And if you want this shelf space, you're going to give us this much as an incentive for us to give you the shelf space. It's very, very hard to get shelf space in a big box store. So those big box stores insist on an optic. They just do. Um, doesn't matter what it is. They just insist on an optic. So the uh, the fact that Gamos pulled the open sights, it makes sense from a business perspective that they do that because it has to be set up for the optic to work really well. And that's, yeah, that's the way it is. So they have the optic uh, set up. It's a cool thing. I actually like their bundled optic. I don't have a problem with it. I know some people want to gripe and complain about it, but I find it works just fine for me. So there you go. Um, this one gentleman said, uh, no open sights. If you drop the gun, you can break the scope, no sight worthless. No one carries an extra scope. Well, my question would be to you guys, how many times have you been out in the woods, dropped your gun, and come home because you couldn't use it? I'm thinking, I'm really thinking, honestly thinking hard, if I've ever had a scoped gun where I was out in the woods and did something that prevented me from continuing to use the gun. I've dropped guns. I've bumped them on trees. I've bumped them on rocks. I've fallen with guns, like slipped and fall. I've, I'm trying to think if ever I've done something to the point where I could not use it. And I don't think I ever have. So while I understand in theory, there's a, there's a, <laughs> um, you know, is that fact or is that just a feeling, right? So I think the concept of that makes sense on paper, but I'm trying to remember if I've ever had a situation where I've ever not been able to continue using it. I'm, not, I'm sure it's happened to folks. I'm absolutely positive that it has certainly happened. But I bet you it's the exception of the exception of the exception rather than the rule. So, um yeah, the guy saying, Black Road saying, I've never dropped a gun hard enough to ruin the sighting would be my thing and and i've had people complain because i'll you'll see me kind of on a video grab the gun by the scope and walk it back to the range or whatever and they're like oh how can you grab the scope like that and i'm thinking well goodness if i can't if it can't take that i don't ever want to trust it i mean oh my gosh if if the mounts and the optic can't take me picking it up and uh, supporting the weight of the gun and walking 20 yards and putting it in a gun rack. If it can't take that, yeah, I've got the wrong product on the gun. Um, I've never had a problem with that. So I understand the I understand the theory, but I think in reality it's a non-issue um, personally. So there you go. 
Um, some other comments on that same video. One guy says, um, oh, this was a different, uh, unless, the, the, could this be on the same thing? It might be. I don't know. It's like two different things, but the guy saying, great content, Rick. I would like you to compare this with the Notos and the head-to-head. -head. So the Notos against the Gambo Swarm Magnum. That would be interesting. Um, ruin the outing. You know, Black Rose, I changed your word, but I understand what you said now. Um, let's see. Oh, gosh. What do you guys think? Should I compare like something like this? It's the same energy, right? So it's about 30 foot-pounds to 30 foot-pounds. One's a little PCP pistolish carbine, micro carbine. The other's a full size brake barrel. Same power output. I wonder that might be that might be an interesting video. Let me know if you guys think that would be fun to for, for us to do. I'd, maybe if Angie comes out, that's something we could do together. Uh, he says continues on. Says aim small, not high. Keep it the bullseye. I I'm I'm liking it. Aim small is good advice, by the way. Um, okay. So we had another comment here uh, about this was on the Air, on one of my Aracuda standard videos, and I did respond to this um, viewer on the video, but I'm going to talk about it here because actually I thought it was a pretty interesting comment. Um, yeah, Bean Flip says do it. I think I'm going to have to. That may not be a bad video. Interesting, like power, because you're really comparing power. Yeah, I don't know. Same caliber, 22 to 22, regulated versus brake barrel. I don't know. I want to see if I can set that up. That might be fun to do. All right. So the Air Cuda Standard comment was this. Hey, Rick, I keep asking everybody. Nobody wants to answer me. I get it. Uh, I have that same problem with YouTube. I ask some questions. They don't want to talk to me. Uh, I've got the same gun here, speaking of the Air Cuda Standard. And I was thinking about putting sling studs in it. Do you think it, uh, you can put sling studs in this stock or will it crack it up front? I don't want to crack the stock. You have any idea? Uh, I looked at it. It looks very thin. I I think you may be pushing it. That's what I said in my comments, to try and put a swivel stud in the front. I don't know that there's enough meat there to really get it without, gosh, me. If you're really good with woodworking, you know what you're doing. Maybe I'm not. I can't saw straight or put things straight. I can't. I would be the wrong guy there. But maybe the right person knowing what they're doing could do it. So maybe that. I would say that would be your best your best bet. And I just realized we've been at 720 this whole time and I could have been broadcasting at 1080p. That frustrates me. Okay, we shall move on. Um, yeah, I would not. I personally wouldn't try and put swivel studs on that unless I could get down more towards the trigger guard and it wasn't too uncomfortable there. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe there's a, a fix that JTS can come up with this because I think, uh, yeah, black hair say wood hardener to strengthen it first. That's uh, that would be interesting. Um, I think there's a gentleman asked me, um, would this be a good home defense option? If you're talking about the Evan X30, let me know. Um, I know that there are people that have considered it as such. I am not a fan of air guns as home defense, generally speaking, unless you're putting out similar energy to a comparable firearm, because the last thing you want to do is piss them off and have them beat you to death with your own air gun. That would be really bad. Um, I'm not a fan of less than lethal self-defense, and I'm not a fan of having to ever, hopefully, pray, I pray to God, and never, ever, ever have to be in that situation to do such a thing to have to think about bringing lethal force I, I just don't ever want that and i never want that for anyone else really i know that that's not a reality that there are there are people that face that every day i hope i never have to and my family never has to deal with that personally um but if i ever did i'm probably going to want something that isn't going to mess around um, now, in situations where you have no other option, I think what I need to do is really, I think I need to do a video series, and I, you guys tell me what you think about this, because I can, I'm pretty sure I can go to Clear Ballistics and they will um, work with me with some medium, some product. 
But I don't think people get the the huge difference between even a 22 long rifle and say this 30 cal Evidex. So 22 long, long rifles do about 120 some foot pounds. You can get some pretty nasty ammo, like you get stingers or hollow points. They're really, I mean, the the wound channel, the damage they do is pretty aggressive. Versus a, a pellet that like 30 foot pounds. Let's just say it does get between 25 and 30. I don't know if it gets that high. Let's say 25. I mean, so you're you're looking at a fraction of the energy, which can be stopped by a cell phone, right? I, I don't I don't know, I don't know that people have a reality of the difference, the real difference you're talking about here. Not that air guns can't be highly effective. I'm thinking of, I've got some, uh, I mean, I've got the SWA 20 gauge, which put double round ball in it, I'm pushing 200 foot pounds at close range. That'll work. That'll work really well. No question. Um, 30 foot pounds, 25 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds. I mean, people ask me about little BB, CO2 BB guns as are three foot pounds. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't see that as working. I, I know. People want to tell you otherwise. I don't want to tell you crap that isn't true. I don't want to give false hope and bad expectations and stuff. I think that is just bad form. Uh, it can is probably if I did a whole series on air guns for self defense and marketed it right, I'd probably do really well on YouTube. Uh, it telling people a bunch of stuff that's really going to hurt them better than help them. I'm not going to do it. I'd rather show some honest stuff like real stuff, I would consider doing that. I'd really like to do that, actually. I think that would be very educational in the society and time we live in. So, um, Anyway, yeah. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I think it'd be worthwhile to do. I need to find a way to pay for it. Um, John's saying, nope, 9 millimeter minimum. Yeah, 9 mils, about 300 and some change foot pounds. <laughs> so, 300 and some change to 25. There's a, I'd rather the 300 and some change. Um, Big Dog is asking, not to get off subject, don't worry about it. We're just rambling here at this point, guys. Uh, but do you have any idea or heard anything about the Benjamin Woodwalker pistol coming back out? No, I haven't. The conversion I just did happens to be of my old Woodwalker, which is certainly a nice product, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, so, um, let's do a couple more, uh, viewer questions cause we're going to be coming to the bottom of the hour, which will be our hour. Um, so uh, this guy had a pretty good statement. This is some more off of some more gamma videos. Sorry guys. That's what happened to be the majority of comments this time around. Uh, gamma swarm Magnum pro gentleman says this really seems like a solution to ammo shortages and high prices for shooting fun. Absolutely. Paul Jones just said, was saying pepper spray and uh, baseball, baseball bat. Yeah. I mean, actually, reality, that's probably better than an air gun that has no energy. Especially if you can act completely crazy and go, you know, bat nuts on them. And yeah, it's probably more effective. Um yeah, so I actually, one of the reasons I got into air guns is that for me to go shoot my firearm at the time was too far of a drive and inconvenient. So air guns gave me the opportunity to go get some trigger time in my backyard that was legal, and I loved it, and the rest, as they say, is history. So, yeah, air guns are a great way to get in trigger time and not having not have to have the expense of traveling to a gun range or like has crooked traveling to a gun range or paying prices for ammo. Ammo is very expensive. Uh, yeah. Air guns are great for that. Just, um, you, if you get bit by the bug, don't blame me. <laughs> Cause once you get started, it's hard to, it's hard to stop, which is fine. It's good. It's a good hobby. Uh, another one, I just did a Gamma Swarm Magnum advanced tutorial. Now that video was longer and I went through, hold and why the hold's important and how to sight the scope and how not to chase the shot and why you want to shoot close first, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. And I thought it was a really good video. I enjoyed doing it more black 
back roads say uh, more fun than golf. Nah, I don't know about that. Certainly cheaper. Um, I like playing golf. I got I'm horrible. I go when I play golf. I get my money's worth. I'm shooting triple digits. I'm just saying. So, um, I, I love the sport though. I'm terrible at it. Horrible. But I do have a good time when I go out and do it. Anyway, um, so this video, these are some of the comments. One of them was, thanks, Rick. There's a lot of information in this video, especially for newbies. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people make really common mistakes when they're trying to first get set up with an air gun. They try and rest it. Break barrel, excuse me. The break, they're trying to rest it or vice it. Or they're, they're just, uh, one of the things people do is they'll shoot at a bench, like all braced and viced and cushioned and perfect, and they get all dialed in, and they go take it out of the woods and they hold it different, and brake barrels don't like that. And next thing you know, you're not hitting anything. You can't think. Then you blame the gun, and you blame your scope. It's the scope. It's the pellet. It's the gun. No, it's you. Um, but you can mitigate all of that if you practice right. So the video should help people practice better and get more out of their gun. Hey, guys. Looks like we dropped there for a second. I don't know what happened. Um, let's see here. See if we get back up. Hey, we're back up and going. Uh, yeah, we had a little glitch. Back to the fun internet glitches, but at least my software didn't crash. That's awesome. Uh, John was saying a large caliber rifle would be a far better option. I tell you the gun that would be on the self-defense. Let me just take a set aside for the comments for just a minute. On the self-defense side, here's, here's one of the reasons I'm not a fan of any air gun being used for self-defense. The general unreliability of them. With a firearm, it's all mechanical, right? I mean, you have a, a firing pin, especially if you have like a shotgun, like a break action or a double barrel break action or something like you have. It's click, doop, kaboom. I mean, it's super, super simple. There's nothing to go wrong with it. You don't have, you don't have to worry about the air leaking out. <laughs> as long as you keep your ammo dry, right? Buy good ammo, right? Keep reliable ammo. Keep it dry. Keep your gun clean. There's nothing to go wrong with it. I mean, I've had, I mean, any, if you fire semi-automatic, you do any shooting of any sort of volume, you're going to have misfires. You're going you're gonna to find a batch of ammo that doesn't run right in your gun. All of that stuff aside, you buy the right ammo, you keep your gun clean. Guess what? It's going to work when you need it. You can do all of that with your PCP and pick it up and have no air. Just one day an O-ring gives out, you don't even know it. You have a slow leak, you go to pick it up, you need it, you got nothing in it, and now it's a bat. It's an expensive bat. So the main reason that I'm against air guns of any kind for personal defense is the complete unreliability of them. Uh, and that is... That in cost is I have my Red Wolf needs service. I have Air Arms that need service. I have BSA that needs service. I have uh, FX that needs service. I have uh, cheap guns. I have uh, Beamans that need service. I have Avengers that need service. I have all of the PCPs. You own them long enough, they're going to need service. And if you don't service them regularly and know how to and check them regularly and just to assume that when you absolutely need it, you're going to pick it up and it work, that's scary. No, sir. So that's my big aversion is less about power and all the other stuff. And it's more about just general reliability. Yeah. John's saying, me too, but I got a felony conviction, can't own a firearm. That's a whole nother subject. That's a whole nother situation. And in that situation, I think there are some options that you have. And I think the other part of the video series I could do would be talking about those options that are actually legitimately useful. Um, not to toot my own horn, but like the little SWA we have, it's a 10 inch now because we had to put a gauge on it, but I have a 10 inch 20 gauge micro carbine that is again, 150 to 200 foot pounds. That'll work. And that gun's like super simple. I mean, super simple. Um, there's no no regulator. There's only a handful of O-rings. It's built like a freaking tank, stainless steel and aluminum and machined. And I mean, it is the beast. It's not a finesse gun. It's got terrible trigger cocks, hard, 
but it works. <laughs> so I think you have options uh, that could be, if you're in that situation, I think you have options. But if you can go a different direction, I think you're better off in the long run. So, yeah, Paul's talking about strictly home defense, a shotgun. I agree. Nothing like a 12 gauge. And there's nothing like racking a pump action 12 gauge to strike fear in the hearts of somebody that does not, is not where they shouldn't be. That, that is a universal sound that make the bad guys pee their pants. So anyway, I don't want to get off topic too far that way, but I think it's worth, worth a discussion at some point um, because there's a lot of people that are promoting air guns as things. I think it's, I think it's ill-advised. And I know a lot of people don't want to bring lethal force. Like I know that there's pepper ball and rubber ball. Maybe those things are very useful. I don't, want to be a guinea pig to find out but and i don't want to be in a situation to have to use it on somebody to see if it works um but i don't know maybe maybe i'm full of crap and all of those options are great and i just don't have any experience so i, I really maybe shouldn't comment on those because i don't have any experience maybe i will one day so anyway okay last couple of comments and then we're going to wrap it up we're actually after but we had that little bit of a pause <laughs> alarm system that sounds like a shotgun cocking that's kind of cool. Maybe a dog barking too. Big old gnarly dog. Um, another gentleman on the same video says, "Great brake barrels are great for learning the fundamentals, and if you can master the brake barrel, everything else is easy peasy." That is absolutely true. That's why I'm glad I learned on a brake barrel. Sort of like learning to drive, I learned on a standard. I can drive anything now, right? Because I learned that first. Uh, everything else is is easy, and brake barrels are certainly that. Um, Another gentleman says, great words of wisdom there, Rick, even for the experienced shooter who allows complacency to overrule common sense, he says in parentheses, that would be me. Me too often. You're not alone. Thanks for this one. Yeah, that, that's a great, that video was just a great refresher on um, what, you know, some things anyone, any of us can do to kind of dial in our technique. And I have, I was going to talk about this tonight. I have to talk, I want to talk about this next when Angie's up. I found an article that was put out by the air by the National Guard on shooting. And they were talking about breathing. And I thought it was hilarious because boy, they don't care about hot takes in their periodicals. Um, because he was talking about people that talk that make such an emphasis on watch your breathing, basically don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. And I thought that was very interesting. Uh, but I read the document and I happen to agree with him. So I'm eager to go out and try some of the things and see if I can break some of the bad habits that I have uh, unfortunately developed over the years through laziness and ignorance and see if I can improve. Because I everything he said make a lot, a lot more sense than the way I've been trying to do things. So I think that's going to be a fun, a fun topic for sure. Okay. Uh, last one, and this was the Gamma Magnum GR22. Uh, and this was a gentleman was talking about open sights uh, or talking about sights and that riser. So that gun shipped with a very tall riser on the back and it makes it so you can't use the open sights. So why bother, right? Gamma does have a replacement cheek riser. Now, I don't know when or how they're going to make those available in general as an accessory, but you can take the stock off pull the high riser off, put the flat riser on, put the stock, the butt stock back together, and now you can use your open sights. It's not as easy as like an adjustable cheek piece, but it is a replaceable cheek piece, one for open sights, one for a scope. And when they make that available, that's going to be cool because everybody that's got one of the magnums that has open sights but can't use them, you'd be able to use your gun with open sights again. And that, I cannot wait to see that. I really am going to be, I'm going to be meeting with Gamo after in a little while and I'm really going to push them to get that on their website as an accessory. So that would be super cool. And I will promote the ever living heck out of that thing. Um, a gentleman asking Paul saying, would it be worth to put a scope on a one thirties hot sun? I would, I can't see though. I mean, I'm, my eyesight is really bad. So I have to rely on optics for everything. What scope, I guess, would be the question. I've got some correspondence out to Hawk because I I really want to get some of the more affordable scopes and test them on some brake barrels, see how they do. I know their Vantage IR is one I've always used uh, for brake barrels, regardless of the power output. It's been pretty good. And also their Air Max also should hold up. So those are the ones I'm hoping to get my hands on. 
So hopefully that will be something we can talk about. Guys, that's going to be it. Um, yeah, uh, Paul, say if I'm out of time, no worries. That's going to be it for now, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out. I know we went a little bit long. Hopefully next next week we'll have Angie back. We'll talk more about Airgun Army. We'll talk more about Airgun Expo. Hopefully we'll be able to announce some more some more participants. I'm fairly certain we're going to have a full house like we did last year. So definitely stay with us. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry about the little inter interruption in the broadcast there. Hopefully my sister can edit that out for the podcast and everything will be hunky dory good to go. Guys, that's going to be it. My name is Rick here with Airgun Web. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. You guys come out here and spend an hour of your time listening to this old fart, gray headed, bald guy, fat. <laughs> Talk about air guns. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hopefully it's useful to you guys and we all have a good time doing it. All right. So I'm out. So you guys have a great rest of your week. See you next week. Bye.